North Queensland's agricultural and biodiversity are under serious threat. Running amuck in our river systems, wetlands and cane fields is a menace that causes $18 million of damage annually to the agricultural sector alone. Under legislation, it's a class two pest, a threat to economic, environmental and social resilience, even capable of spreading foot and mouth disease. The feral pig needs to be brought under control before it devastates the North Queensland economy. Feral pig's been known to eat just about anything in terms of agricultural production. They get all the crops, uh, sugar cane, bananas, corn, peanuts, you name it, they'll eat it. Feral pig expert and author of Feral Pig Control, Dr Jim Mitchell, has worked closely with NQ Dry Tropics in the control of feral pigs. They carry a large number of uh, endemic diseases throughout the cattle industry, such as brucellosis and lepto, leptospirosis. They are also responsible for transmitting diseases to humans, such as um, uh, Ross River fever, just about any disease that humans can get, feral pigs can get as well and transmit. They also can carry exotic diseases, of which foot and mouth disease is the big one, and it's estimated that if foot and mouth get into Australia, we could lose up to $9 billion in the first year that the disease outbreaks. They um, break down fences, they kill lambs, they kill um, calves in some situations. They have a, a huge effect on the environment as well. They predate on native animals, they also uh, change the, the habitat for native animals, and they also compete with native animals as well. Feral pigs have significant impact on all primary production across the Burdekin region. They don't care about property boundaries and they'll eat anything that provides them with fuel. As well as a way of life, farming is a business and feral pigs impact on the bottom line. Poisoning, trapping, aerial shooting and fencing are all actions taken by land managers across the Burdekin region to control feral pig numbers. Using these together and in collaboration with neighbouring land managers can be more effective than individual efforts. Each property is unique and needs to be assessed for feral pig impact. A decision can then be made on which control strategy will work best. Helicopter shooting helped Michael and Natasha Penner deal with their pig problem. They have a 1,300 acre mixed enterprise property north of Charters Towers. They grow 2,500 tonnes of potatoes annually with some forage, sorghum and corn as well as grazing cattle. One time we had, um, it would have been approximately 50 pigs come and started digging one night. They would have cleaned up at least a couple of acres of potatoes of that we just freshly planted. So that sort of equates to probably about 50 tonne of, of produce that I didn't sell that year due to feral pigs. That's um, $20,000 just like that. They can become a big issue very quickly. So to spend a couple of thousand dollars on helicopter hire was not even really in the equation. Originally just started with ring lock fencing and then we electrified it. It was hard to maintain and they would always seem to find a way through. Then we started trapping and with um, feral pig hunters. That had limited success. They, they're good at getting rid of the larger animals but you never got rid of all the pigs. So then we, in conjunction with um, people were leasing next door neighbours and they had watermelons and the pigs were hammering them. So in conjunction with them we took a turn about who would hire the machine and the shooter and then we would um, we started to control our feral pig population like that. If you get feral pigs start annoying you when you've just planted it can be fairly expensive. Well constructed well maintained fences can keep pigs off your crops. Add to that the additional deterrent of electric strands and the pigs have a formidable obstacle in front of them. On Sizel's farm near Guru they use electric fences in combination with strategically positioned traps in their campaign against feral pigs. Sizel farm manager Wayne Tomasetti knows well the effectiveness of this control strategy. Traps are set up so there's access for the pigs to get caught coming out of the paddock or from the cattle property into the paddock. Trapping can be labour intensive compared with other methods but it's effective in reducing feral pig populations where other control techniques are not possible and it's particularly effective when integrated with other methods. It's environmentally friendly and humane and particularly suited to small areas of high production or in closely settled areas. When trapping is essential to remember that trapping is a process not an event so you have to go through a whole series or process of things to make sure that you maximise your trapping effort. So you have to look at your trapping strategy, where and when to put your traps, how much bait material to, to use, how to make the most effective trap design, 
how to use the most effective door mechanism because the door is the most essential part of the trap mechanism. So you have to go through the whole process, getting the pigs interested into the bait material, introducing the trap material bit by bit so the pigs don't be scared off, setting up the trap, free feeding for long enough so the pigs will enter and uh, go in and out of the trap so that if you use this a process approach, you can maximise your trapping effort. It's definitely working. We don't actively trap unless we see evidence of them in the area, uh, just so they don't get too used to everything, but, but it's definitely working. Wayne works closely with Sizal farm manager Ryan Matthews, and together they're fully aware of the need for integrated and collaborative approaches with neighbouring properties for feral pig control. The reason why we, we came together to have a combined effort at controlling these pigs, uh, everyone was suffering the same uh, levels of damage that we we're encountering on our own properties. Uh, coming together as a group, and we formed the, the Horton Management Group, uh, just provided each of the landholders, whether they were large landholders like ourselves or some of the smaller landholders, the opportunity to all have input into a control measure. The main one that we used the group to tackle was aerial shooting. It's an expensive operation for one landholder to go out and do on his own. Uh, even for the likes of our organisation where we're, where we're rather large, uh, it's still a costly exercise. So having all our neighbours come together and form a, a management group to tackle the pig problem, particularly from an aerial uh, shooting point of view was quite advantageous. If, if we had no program at all um, with the current pig population that we've got out there in, in the fringing areas to our farming operations, uh, we would have huge problems. We'd, we'd still be losing big crop yield, uh, damage to irrigation infrastructure, those sorts of things. Having a combined effort with our neighbouring landholders, we've been able to keep the pig population down to a manageable uh, size um, and that's helped improve our profitability by not having to go out and waste money fixing irrigation, having man hours out there with a shovel fixing up problems. So it's been a big, big plus working with our neighbours to try and keep it, keep ahead of um, all these pig, pig numbers that are out there. As Sizel found, helicopter shooting is very effective for quick impact on feral pig populations. It works best in open terrain, remote locations, and in those inaccessible areas such as swamps and marshes. Ryan Jones of Ray Allen Halliwork has years of experience in aerial culling management. He understands the importance of including aerial hunting in an integrated feral pig control program. The helicopters definitely seem to be the one uh, tool in the toolbox that will get the numbers from large to small very quickly and also through the perception of farmers and graziers they see the results which is something that you need to do straight up so that they're on board uh, and once they're on board uh, the rest is very easy. Poisoning, also known as baiting, is yet another very effective technique for large-scale eradication because it's efficient, inexpensive and relatively easy to administer. It effectively removes the bulk of the feral pig population with the least effort and cost and is especially useful for remote and inaccessible locations. Aerial and ground baiting are the two most cost-effective solutions and both rapidly reduce pig numbers. When using poisoning as a control technique, it's very important to use the correct bait. There is some difficulty in times because pigs will be on a local uh, nat native food source and it's very important that you spend enough time and effort to get pigs onto your bait material so that you can poison them and, or trap them in the future. To supply the bait material as a form of free food so that the pigs get used to it, set up trail lines around the area, um, put dumps of bait material around so the pigs can encounter the baits and become accustomed to that food source. Once the pigs become accustomed to that food source, you can bring them into areas where they can be controlled, such as um, bait stations or traps. One of the best forms of, of a bait station is so-called hog hoppers. Hog hoppers are very useful in that only pigs can operate the, the mechanism. So they're very pig specific. And if you're using poisons, that means that no other non-target animals, no other native animals can access that bait material. So they're very safe. Ground hunting and dogging can be effective when incorporated into an overall management campaign and coordinated closely with landholders. Gaining permission to enter properties, working within the other control method being employed and using safe hunting methods are imperative to a coordinated effort. Jason O'Keefe, an experienced commercial hunter and now a keen recreationalist, 
believes that responsible ground hunters have a role to play in feral pig control. We definitely need the, the hunters on the ground with the dogs and the such of that, because once the cane gets up, the helicopter can't see into the cane to shoot it. Talking to farmers, getting their trust and letting them know you're not some yobbo off the street, showing them you're doing the right things and just generally using the dogs and the cane to push them out is a, is a huge benefit. With an economic impact of more than $80 million a year, feral pigs are a pest that has to be brought under control. Their damage has a direct impact on the productivity and profitability of our primary producers and their families. NQ Dry Tropics is working with landholders to control this major problem. Brett King, NQ Dry Tropics Biodiversity Program Coordinator, Sums up. An integrated and collaborative approach to feral pig management is important because no standalone control technique will ultimately manage a feral pig population, so it's important to integrate various methods. Um, the other important factor there is, is collaboration, so working with one another to achieve better and greater outcomes in the landscape.